In this fast and furious housing market, there are real blunders buyers can make which will affect the success of either deciding to purchase or maybe even deciding not to purchase. Well, I'm not going to talk about the basics like making sure you are pre-approved. What I am going to discuss is how you should really prepare psychologically and realistically. I'm going to tell you about the five top blunders buyers make which not only waste their time but the realtor's time and most most importantly, what five questions you should ask when interviewing a realtor. So let's get started. I'm Maria Wells, your real estate expert on the Treasure Coast of Florida, providing all sorts of information on neighborhoods, homes, and current topics in real estate. I would really enjoy hearing from you. So any questions you have regarding real estate, please comment below and I will get back to you quickly. Remember to subscribe to my channel to receive all sorts of information on buying or selling real estate released every Tuesday. So here we go. Number one blunder, not having a realistic picture of the real estate market. Yes, housing prices have gone up a lot in this past year, like to the tune of 21% and condos have gone up 24%. So if you feel that the prices are ridiculous and you are convinced you don't want to pay these prices, that's completely understandable, then sit it out. However, there is absolutely no indication this market is coming down. You may want to watch this video right here on the predictions for the 2022 housing market. And if you are renting, rents are skyrocketing and paying rent, which is typically higher than a mortgage payment, is just throwing money away. So in this scenario, you need to listen to your realtor who is an expert in the area, understanding where the economic base of real estate is going, where it is now and where it should be in the future. It's all about trends to make sure that you are going to make the right and perfect decision. So number two, you forgot to calculate your overall budget. You've received your pre-approval or you may be paying cash, but have you figured out the rest of your budget and how the house payment will figure in to your day-to-day -day financing. Knowing what your living costs are, such as food and clothes and going out and entertainment, in addition to the costs where you will live. So the difference of the mortgage payment from your living expenses and your mortgage payment should also include taxes, insurance, and HOA fees if there are any. That way you're gonna have a really very realistic picture when you are ready to put pen to paper and make an offer on home. Number three blunder, poor preparation results in poor performance. Well, what does that mean? This is not the time to change directions when looking at property. Be prepared, stay focused, talk to your realtor, look at everything possible to get acquainted with the market. Make sure your realtor sends you listings. Look on Google, look on the internet, look at maps. You want to make sure that when you finally go out to see a piece of property, you are so ready. You have seen so many of the homes on MLS before you've ever walked into them that you're going to know if it's a great deal and for everything that you've already seen. Do you know how many times I will hear from a buyer if I'm working with them that the first home we see is absolutely perfect and they refuse to do anything at that point because they want to see what else is on the market and guess what happens? If you snooze, you lose. So number four blunder, you are paralyzed in making a decision. You should be very familiar with what's available by the time you physically go look at houses. So just what I was mentioning before, make sure that you are comfortable with the area because this decision is not gonna wait until you do all that homework. You will frustrate yourself when looking and you aren't gonna be able to buy the house that would have been perfect after you've thought it through. So you need to be so ready to pull that trigger when you are looking at a house going, I've done my budget, I know what my living expenses are, this is the area I wanna be in, this is a great house or condo I want, and you are ready to make it happen. That's being prepared. So number five, you fail to hire the right realtor. Well, hiring the right realtor will make the difference of finding the home that you want and getting you to the closing table. There are five questions you should ask. If you like the first realtor, then use them. You don't have to interview a ton of realtors 
Realtors. Stop when you find the one you like. So here go the questions. Number one, do you work full time? I'm sure they will say yes, so dig in a little further. What else do you do other than real estate? Will I be able to reach you during the day, you know, or in the evening if I need you? And see what they have to say. You've got to dig in a little because full-time is very different things to many realtors. Number two, find out how well they communicate. Do you like how they sound on the phone? Do they get right back to you? If they're writing you something in an email, do you like how they write it? That everything they do communicates very well because I can tell you communication in this business is essential. Number three, ask them, why should I hire you? If they answer because I'm passionate and I love to look at homes or helping people buy homes, run! Those are not great answers. But here's some answers that might be a little different to know how committed this realtor may be for you. There are other answers that are much better than this. So for instance, are they committed into the profession? Do they have any educational designations? Now those designations might mean nothing to you, but what it means is they've taken the time and energy to educate themselves to be able to help you better in purchasing or selling a home. So you want to see if they've got additional education, you know, are they committed to the industry? Do they volunteer within the town? You know, what's their background that's going to make them as knowledgeable as they can for you to work with them? And even if you look at someone and they may not have all of that, but if they happen to work with a broker who does have all those things, I can tell you if that broker is highly skilled, they're probably not going to let those agents be out there without knowing exactly what they need to do because typically the apple won't fall far from the tree. Number four question is, how are you at negotiations? Did you know that there are three times a realtor will negotiate during the transaction of buying a home? Well, number one is to put together for the offer to get the best price. Number two is after the inspections. If there's problems or whatever, do they need to negotiate to get you more money for these repairs? And number three is after the appraisal. If it doesn't come in and there is room for negotiating that allows this to be worked out, you want your realtor to be excellent at negotiating for all three of those times. So the fifth question is, where do you get your business? If they say most of their business is from referrals, well, that says a lot. That means that clients love them and they keep referring their friends or family or whatever to use them because they know they'll do a great job. But if they say that they get their business usually from referrals off the internet or whatever, well, that means they probably can't get the business on their own either because they're new or maybe they're not good at follow through with what they're doing so you need to ask a few more questions to make sure that they are going to fit into what you need here is an important tip I know you're anxious to get a home but do not call the other Realtors stick with the agent you chose the listing agent typically is not going to look out for you and the Realtor you've been working with is invested in finding you the right home so the same holds true for any questions you may have. Some buyers want to do all the legwork. They think they're really helping their realtor, but I'm telling you they're not. Because if you call that other realtor who has that listing, it could be construed that you are working with that realtor and that means the person you've been working with is not going to be part of that transaction. After you've spent all those days and time and hours to find you the right property, your realtor will get back to you with the answer answers the questions and if they don't know the answer they will find the answer but by calling the other agent is not going to get you to where you need to be. I also want to say to you that if you are moving anywhere in the United States please contact me. I have a great list of A-rated Realtors to help all around the country to get you connected to make sure that you are well taken care of. So just comment below or my information is right below for you to either email or call me. So I look forward to hearing from you. Remember to subscribe and in the meantime, happy house hunting.